on this edition of The American Veteran, finding answers to end seizures. I didn't want anybody to know that I had seizures. I was embarrassed. Plus, veterans finding a new mission. I found one. This is how I show my commitment to my country. And let the games begin. How the VA's summer sports clinic helps heal. Those stories and more on this edition of The American Veteran. Welcome to The American Veteran. I'm Jonathan Kopenger, a Navy veteran. We are here at the Defense Media Activity Studio in Fort Meade, Maryland. And joining me is our active duty guest host, Lance Corporal Ali Beiswinger. It's a pleasure to have you with us here, and thank you for your service. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Jonathan, many veterans with PTSD and traumatic brain injuries are experiencing a serious consequence, seizures. To determine if the seizures are epilepsy or some other medical condition, Veterans check into the Epilepsy Centers of Excellence for answers. All right, come on in, Dennis. I'm gonna show you where you're gonna be spending your time this week. Navy veteran Dennis Kelly is checking into VA's Epilepsy Monitoring Unit in Seattle to find answers for his seizures. You know, I didn't let anybody know because I was, I was embarrassed. You know, I didn't want anybody to know that I had seizures. I haven't been diagnosed with epilepsy or anything. We're still trying to figure that out, whether it's you know, from being in the Gulf War, a war, just from being stressed out from wartime and uh, watching these guys go through what they're going through and just putting myself there. Seizures can be epileptic or non-epileptic. Epileptic seizures are triggered by an electrical storm in the brain. During non-epileptic seizures, the brain's electrical activity is normal. Non-epileptic events can be a manifestation of psychiatric or psychological disorders like PTSD. I came in because I was having uh, uh, dizzy spells, vertigo, my eyelid starts drooping. It's very frightening not knowing what's going on and what's going to happen, what could happen. Both Dennis and Deborah turned to VA's Epilepsy Centers of Excellence for answers. With a network of 16 locations, veterans with seizure disorders can find hope and healing. Veterans are admitted to the Epilepsy Monitoring Unit because they're experiencing a set of symptoms that are unexplained and there have not been any effective treatment for them. And I'm going to take your glasses for a minute. Bringing someone into the Epilepsy Monitoring Unit and making an accurate diagnosis as to the cause of their symptoms will allow effective therapeutic recommendations to be made. Sometimes metabolic, cardiovascular, and even psychogenic causes can produce temporary and recurrent neurologic symptoms. The only way to determine the cause of a patient's seizures is to collect video and EEG data while they have their symptoms. I get really, really violent. I don't go looking for anybody. I don't go out of my way. I just like to lay down and, and usually half my body is completely numb afterwards. I look back in history and it just just scares me to know, you know, that they used to lock people up like me with the seizures, you know, lock them away. Jesse Kelly knows too well how Dennis feels. I started having grand mal seizures and um, shattered teeth, uh, chewing off tongue, I mean, flapping on the floor, broke my spine multiple times. The Epilepsy Centers of Excellence confirmed Jesse's epilepsy and that he was a candidate for a procedure that removes the part of the brain that causes seizures. They narrowed it down with the sensors on my head to the right temporal region, all right? This procedure isn't an option for all patients, but for those who are candidates, it offers a high chance of becoming seizure-free. Some patients have seizures that start on both sides of the brain, and that's uh, a problem because if we treated one area surgically, the other area can independently cause seizures. This was the case for Dennis. The monitoring showed that his seizures come from both sides of the brain, so surgery is not an option. Can you open your eye? And for Deborah, her stay here revealed that the dizzy spells and eye problems are not seizures. Therefore, she can cross epilepsy off the list. It feels great that the epilepsy has been ruled out. Now I'm on a new path to find out something else. Dennis ends his stay learning that he does have epilepsy. He continues to take anti-seizure medication to control his seizures. 
His providers can explore existing therapies as well as the new technologies and therapies that are currently advancing through clinical trials. I've learned a lot since I have been coming to the seizure unit. I am just impressed with what they're doing at every hospital and I truly believe they go out of their way to really try to help. The Epilepsy Centers of Excellence National Office is in San Francisco. In addition to monitoring, the 16 centers also offer epilepsy education, research, clinical care, and support. Visit epilepsy.va.gov to learn more. What's important to you in your life? Your health, job, family? Part of VA's mission involves working with veterans to identify the answers, then incorporate them into healthy living behaviors. The Life Goals Initiative is designed to advance nine healthy living messages put forward by VA's National Center for Health Promotion and Disease Prevention. We want to know what's important to the veteran. What do they want? So what we did is we created a life goal form. It's a form that asks the patient, what's important to you in your life? Every veteran here is given the opportunity to complete the form. Army veteran Harvey Plaza recorded his life goals before a recent visit to discuss his difficulty getting a good night's sleep. I was reviewing the life goal that you filled out before you came in, and I noticed that uh, you say what really matters to you in your life are your children. Yes. Harvey wants to remain healthy to enjoy and support his family, and that's why today he is joining these veterans at the community-based outpatient clinic in Richland, Washington. The National Institute of Health says at least 70 million Americans suffer from a sleep problem. They've come to attend a sleep improvement clinic. After becoming aware that their inability to log some Z's through the night is more than just a nuisance, it may involve a serious disorder known as sleep apnea. When we have insomnia and we don't sleep, it really impacts the body in some significant ways. Heart attacks, stroke, coronary heart disease, anxiety, depression, increase at a two to three time greater risk than those who do not have obstructive sleep apnea. So it is a life-threatening illness and needs to be treated. Does your mind just kind of spin and it's kind of tough to shut it down and get to sleep? Okay. The veterans here are on the way to confronting that possibility. And they're not alone. In the 13 months prior to launching its Life Goals Initiative, Richland Seabach recorded just two consults for sleep. In its wake, there are up to 89 consults in just a little over three months. Once they understand that it's, it's all about them, that we're not going to try to force anything, on them and that we are here to support them and help them, um, then they are way more than willing to sit and talk and be very honest and open about what their needs are. So what we want to do within the VA system is we want to establish a relationship. And we've had some comments from the veterans that they say, you know, it's really nice to be asked what I want rather than to be told. People really don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Hit some of the punchline. It's all based on an idea that has become increasingly clear in recent years, that better health outcomes are more likely to occur when each patient's goals are put first. Clinicians say patient participation has resulted in greater acceptance of healthy living behaviors and as a result, an enhanced quality of life. For more information on life goals, visit the website for VA's National Center for Health Promotion and Disease Prevention at www.prevention.va.gov. Veterans Kelly Carlisle and Paul Grieve were looking for their next career after transitioning out of the military. But they wanted a career that they could really get excited about and one that could take advantage of their military experience. Both found what they were looking for in an unusual setting. Miss Kelly, what is this? Is this? These are collard greens. Oh. Yep, collard greens. And look, we have one red cherry tomato. I don't know that I would trade this for anything. This is how I show my commitment to my to my country now. Morning, sheep. Anybody hungry? As a Marine, I was passionate about what I was doing. As a farmer, I feel that same passion that I did as a Marine. After a few years of transitioning out of the military, Kelly Carlisle, a single mom to Kaya, found herself jobless in her hometown of East Oakland, California. She couldn't afford daycare, so she started gardening with her daughter. 
But she also wanted to change the environment where she lived, which was called the fifth most dangerous city in America. It made me upset, you know. There's a lot of bureaucrats and teachers that talk about how we're going to make big changes here. But, you know, in the 20 years since I lived here, it hasn't changed. After his service, Paul Grieve landed in San Diego, where he thought he would reassimilate into the corporate world. He was wrong. It was harder than I thought leaving the Marine Corps, even though I didn't have any extreme uh, combat situations while I was in. Um, just the camaraderie. I, I really missed being around the guys, training outside, constantly working with my hands. Paul wears the same combat boots and belt from his days in Iraq. And right. Kelly wears the same yeah, jacket yeah. all the time, yeah. showing that she is a veteran. Right. Reminders of their pride and service. Are you ready? Are we ready? Run! Now, Kelly and Paul have found a new mission in farming. The mission is to continue to serve, continue to envision something better. That something better is acta non verba, Latin for deeds, not words, a nonprofit urban youth farm project to create a safe, creative outdoor space for kids. In learning about healthy lifestyles, kids are empowered by planting and growing their own vegetables and then selling them to the community. She saw a need in her community. She saw a need for people to be, have access to fresh food. Tia Christopher, also a Navy veteran, is the chief of staff of the Farmer Veteran Coalition, a nonprofit that connects military veterans with opportunities for employment, training, and places to heal on farms with the help of grants, business assistance, and mentoring. So I think one of the things that the military gives you is a real sense of action, is a real sense of you see a problem and you're going to address it. You're not going to wait for someone else to come along. You're like, I can do this. I can fix this. The organization helped Kelly. Give her your dollar so you can get tomatoes. You want tomatoes? Thank you. you go. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to figure out a way for kids to create a trust for themselves. I see a tomato. For them to invest in their own future, regardless of what their families are doing and, and what maybe they see every day. I found one. Good this job. One hundred percent of the proceeds go into a savings account for the kids. They're ready right now. When they get to that size, that's the size that we want to harvest. Well, what I think she's bringing to us is hope. You could just come out here, walk around, smell the flowers, pick fruits if you can, and just have fun out here. Kelly calls these children her junior officers. We're going to water our plot. And sees their mission in beautifying the city streets. No, you can't put too much water on one plant. Because yeah, it's going to get damp and then it'll drown it. When I joined the Navy, it was for this sense of being on the side of angels, you know, moving our country forward. The idea is to instill in them values similar to, you know, honor, courage, and commitment uh, learned in the Navy. One, two, three, four. I want each child to know that they have that in them, that, you know, it's not just about the hustle. <laughs> Starting on one acre of land, Paul Grieve and his family bought and raised 54 chickens with hopes of selling them. To their surprise, they sold out in three weeks. The demand was insane here in Southern California. We had no problem selling the 50, so we went up to 100. From 100, we went to 150. From 150 to 200. From that experience, Primal Pastures was born, a family-run organic farm selling pasture poultry. Now with an army of 1,200 chickens and 100 sheep, raised the way Grieve thinks they should be, outside. And the business is run the way Paul wants it. As a veteran, I learned so much that I wanted to apply into entrepreneurship. So being a business owner and a farmer is such a fun combination. It's such a rewarding career. You may not get paid as much as, say, somebody that's on Wall Street doing consulting, but my pay really comes from being able to spend time with my family, being outside, working with my hands, being able to interact with my customers on a daily basis. As the farm grew, Paul reached out to the Farmer Veteran Coalition and received a grant to buy more land. He also uses the coalition to stay in touch with other veteran farmers through the organization's online connections. So I've been able to connect with some guys doing poultry in North Carolina, raising bees for honey here in Southern California, and just share best practices, what works for you, what doesn't work for you, and it's been an unbelievable resource for us so far. The Farmer Veteran Coalition says there are a thousand veterans now farming across the country, 
and believes farming is a way for veterans to affect their local economies as well as their own well-being. And we find that working with horses, working with cattle, working the land is incredibly healing. Both Paul and Kelly agree, sometimes you just have to follow your heart. Veterans have options. We have a world of options. You don't have to go into uh, an office job if you don't want to work in an office. You know, try out a few things. Just take a step. Just take any kind of action is better than no action. Just like when you're in combat. Take some kind of action. It's going to be better than doing nothing. And who knows, maybe it'll turn into something great. The Farmer Veteran Coalition refers veterans to VA for health care and other benefits. To explore economic opportunity in food and agriculture, go to farmvetco.org. During the final months of World War II, a small detail of U.S. soldiers was assigned to search out, secure, and return trainloads of precious artwork stolen by the Nazis. They became known as the Monuments Men. While Nazi forces were ransacking Europe's cities and plundering her priceless art treasures, the United States was devising a plan to reclaim what had been stolen. Just to give you some kind of feel for the extent, Hitler's collection of paintings reached 4,100 paintings that he had in his particular collection at, uh, alone. Harry Etlinger was a buck private in the army, 19 years old and about to be sent into battle. But because he spoke German, he was assigned instead to the recovery project. My most precious birthday gift I ever got in my life uh, that uh, occurred on that particular day. Out of the eight men that I went overseas with, three of them were killed in action and five more wounded. And it, it has affected me mentally and spiritually that uh, I was saved. Harry still believes he was spared for a reason. It's one thing that uh, I'm proud of, and one thing that I tell all Americans they should be proud of, that we stood for the first time in the history of civilization, not for the destruction, not for the thievery of culture, but for the saving of culture. About 350 men and women from 13 nations took part in the Monuments Men project. In all, they recovered more than five million paintings and other stolen artifacts, then saw to it that they were returned to their rightful owners. Harry himself uncovered this Rembrandt self-portrait stashed in a salt mine in Germany, just one of many masterpieces that were recovered by the Monuments Men. It was the focus and passion of these men and women that really helped preserve some of the greatest treasures of European and world culture. Archivist Michael Kurtz is the author of a book about the Monuments Men. I've dedicated my book to the Monuments Fine Arts and Archives officers because I think they are real and genuine American heroes. They were going into these mines. There were mines that um, the Germans had left um, munitions behind with the idea of trying to blow them up. This took a lot of physical courage as well as hard work. Surviving Monuments Men like Harry Etlinger know well the price that was paid in achieving their mission. Many, many hundreds of Americans lost their lives because of the difficulties of trying to come along and save the culture of Europe. The story of what they achieved has become an inspiring reminder of our own nation's historical heritage, which has so often depended on the heroic actions of individuals like the Monuments Men. It is said that the Monuments Men weren't just saving art, but hundreds of years of culture. Isolation and inactivity can become a veteran's new enemy once they've left the battlefront. But three Iraq War veterans discovered how camaraderie and friendly competition at the VA Summer Sports Clinic are important allies in their rehabilitation back to civilian life. I lost 15 pounds in two weeks. I spent days on end crying days on end not eating. I was almost homeless for a little bit. 
I'm not ashamed to admit that I was really in a really dark hole and I did not want to seek therapy. I did not want to seek help. Carlos Figueroa, Crystal Stokes, and Shaka Green, three combat veterans who returned home only to face new battles as civilians. It was really difficult for me to calm down. It was hard for my wife. She's a strong woman. I mean, she went through a lot with me. And the sad part is my children are in the middle of that. And so we divorced. After 13 years in the Marines, including two tours in Iraq, Shaka returned home with PTSD to a civilian life that now seemed unfulfilling. I mean, literally riding my motorcycle as fast as possible with as many people as possible, stunts, racetracks, halo, anything that was activating and, and stimulating, I was running after at 100 miles an hour because you miss that, even though you wanted to come home, you miss that feeling, that, that instantaneous, I am, literally activated feeling. I didn't really know what I wanted to do with myself. The only thing I'd done my entire life was the Marine Corps and I was good at it. Um, so the fact that I didn't have that, I was kind of lost. I didn't know what to do. Even being from a Marine Corps family didn't prepare 11 year veteran Crystal Stokes for her transition to civilian life. Crystal served three combat tours in Iraq, struggled with PTSD, a knee injury, and feelings of isolation. I went through a period where I had to get help from a family member in order to pay rent. I didn't have anywhere to go, didn't have any idea what was going on. I was injured, then I couldn't work, couldn't do anything. An IED hit me. I injured two ribs, fractured one. Two months exactly to the day when I went out is when I was injured by another IED. After losing a leg in that second blast, Marine Corps and Army veteran Carlos Figueroa sank into a deep depression when he came home. He figured the active lifestyle he dearly loved was over. I actually ended up turning towards alcohol and realized that's not the route I wanted to go. And that's when I started seeking help at the VA. One by one, these fearless warriors found that by arming themselves with intense physical activity, they could stand up to the challenges of civilian life. Shaka Green uses the same Marine Corps regimen that whipped him into shape for Iraq to cope with PTSD. When you're accustomed to putting your body through the rigmarole, you have to keep doing that. You have to figure out how you can match your civilian life with the same level of stimulation so you're not so easily stimulated. Oh, that one, she's tighter than the other. Crystal's athletic prowess and Marine Corps training also paid off in a surprising way. She was recruited to play for the San Diego Surge professional women's football team. I'm on defense, I'm a defensive end. It's an awesome feeling, I love it, it's great. And she found a camaraderie similar to the Marines with her new teammates. They've gotten through me through a lot. Um, they've seen me at some of my lowest. They've seen me irritated, they've seen me mad, they've seen me happy, they've seen me sad. But if I ever really truly needed anything, um, they'd be there in a heartbeat with, with the help. This summer, Crystal, Shaka, and Carlos were among 100 other veterans who joined together at the National Veterans Summer Sports Clinic in San Diego. Extra points, Splitting into teams, they took aim at kayaking, rowing, <laughs> judo, sailing, cycling, and Crystal's favorite, archery. You hit it! She even made a point yes. of encouraging reluctant teammates. High five it, good job! They gained the opportunity to challenge themselves um, outside of their local community and also see the VA in a whole different light. The Marine Corps we call it a spirit of court. You touch each other and you amplify that energy. You all feel it together as a group because that's what you did in the military. You did it as a group, as a team. Get to meet some new people and kind of connect, be able to actually be able to talk to people and use whatever terminology I want and have them not look at me like I've got three, five eyeballs or something, you know. There you go. And after taking part in three summer clinics, Carlos found new inspiration here by serving as a mentor. And what happens here, what's afforded us to do these events, open doors for us, open doors for tons of vets that 
may have sat in their hotel room, may have sat in their bedroom and didn't want to come out. And they do this event and they realize, okay, kayaking is my sport. Surfing is going to be my passion, you know? So it, it's made wonders. It's opened it's open a lifetime for me of friendships. Carlos also participates at the National Veterans Winter Sports Clinic in Colorado, where he excels in snowboarding. VA has a variety of competitions, including the Golden Age Games, Wheelchair Games, and the Summer and Winter Sports Clinic. Is it time for you to compete? Go to va.gov for more information on the games. That concludes this edition of the American Veteran. The Department of Veterans Affairs is honored to bring you this program. If you'd like to get in touch with us or obtain information about VA benefits and services, call us at 1-800-827-1000 or visit our website at va.gov. And if you're a veteran who's troubled in some way, please call the Veterans Crisis Line at 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255.